is up guys, Stu here. And today's London Film Festival review is brought to you by the divine goodness and unholy wisdom of our Lord Timmy Chalamet. <sighs> what do we do to deserve you, Timmy? Because we're talking about Beautiful Boy, which is a new film from Felix Van... Groningen. Now the world don't move to the beat of just one drum. And it's an adaptation of some best-selling memoirs released by David and Nick Sheff, who are a father and son uh, dealing with drug addiction in their life. Uh, the son, Nick, being the one addicted to crystal meth in his life. I never read the memoirs, heard a lot of great things about them, but got very excited about this film. Mainly because I'm a, I'm a strong follower of the Church of Timothy Chalamet. You should come join it. It's great. Instead of the blood of Jesus Christ, we've got the, the blood of Timmy. And uh, in, in, instead of little communion wafers... Um, you know, eating the body of Christ. We eat, we eat cummy peaches. Sunday communion, it's, it's not always the best. Maybe don't bring your grandma. Yeah, I made it no secret that I'm 110% in love with Timothy Chalamet. But this did also look like a genuinely great film. Right up my street. Ripe with dramatic moments. After seeing it... Holy shit. Yeah, 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 it did it for me, guys. I love this film. Gotta be straight up with you guys. This is probably my favourite of the year now. And yeah, it's just as emotionally gut-wrenching as you'd expect from a synopsis like that. It's one of those films where I can totally see a lot of the gripes that people were having with it, but I just fell 110% in love with this film. I just fell into it more and more as it went through. And by the end of this film, I was an absolute weeping mess of a man-baby. Genuinely, it, it was tough. And I think one of the main reasons I got so sucked into it and connected so much with it um, is because of the performances. Dude, Timothy Chalamet is gonna get that Oscar this year. He's gonna do it. I loved him in Call Me By Name and I still think he should have got the Oscar for that. But this is an entirely different beast here. His character of Nick Chef, well, I mean, real life person, but obviously he's playing a character in the film, feels 100% lived in, which is the best compliment you can probably give any actor. I mean, Timothy just absolutely makes this his own. But alongside him, Steve Carell gives, I'm gonna say it, the best performance I think I've ever seen from him. Forget Foxcatcher. Oh, you've got a nice prosthetic nose, Steve, and you're giving a, it was a great performance, but get, get out of here, all right? Beautiful boys here to say, fuck you and your big old nose. No, Steve Carell is uh, outstanding here. It's sort of performance which isn't quite as obviously showy as you'd expect. I mean, there are certain points where you could argue that's the case, but on the whole, it's a really quiet performance from him. And I always love seeing Steve Carell in these kind of quieter, more poignant roles. One of the reasons I loved him so much in Last Flag Flying, a, a very quiet role that, but you could see so much in him. Uh, as an actor, and this is the same here, but he's just got a few more meaty moments here, and I, just, I, I loved him, I love watching him. Towards the end, he had some absolutely incredible moments. Yeah, the two of them are absolutely fantastic, and that's 100% what a film like this needs. Everyone's gonna be talking about how good their performances are, and rightly so. But as someone that's never read the memoirs this is based on, um, I really love the way it went about telling their story here. But it does feel like a more genuine and, and an authentic look at this crisis and problem than we've seen in any other kind of mainstream film up until this point. And I love it all the more for that. And the direction from Felix Van Groningen here, I loved. I thought it worked incredibly well for this story and with the performances that are in it. Here's this way of showing the memories and things that are happening to the family in this film in such a interesting layered way so you always feel like you're getting a little bit more from their picture and at the end of it you feel like you've just kind of lived with these characters for a long time. And part of that does come down to the way that he decides to layer in all the flashbacks that are in the film and this comes into the first thing that I, I meant when I said that I could see why people would find gripes in this film and it's almost something that started to bug me at the beginning but it does jump around in time quite a lot and it can sometimes be a little bit difficult to work out exactly where it is in time and that seemed like it was going to be an issue to me uh, in the first like 10 minutes but I quickly forgot about that and I ended up actually thinking that that's one of the positives about the direction here and one of the things that made it so great and so immersive as a story of a father and son relationship. I feel like you're always being shown memories from their past at exactly the right moment that you need to be and I feel like it just eventually builds up this really rich kind of tapestry of a relationship there and it's one of the best sort of father-son relationships I've seen done in film for a long time. That's another thing that I love so much about this film is that it really does feel a lot like you're watching this kind of collage of different memories and different moments and one of the elements that stitches that all together is the soundtrack. Now the soundtrack really surprised me here. It's an incredibly eclectic, all over the place soundtrack, and that's the second of the points where I think people are getting gripes with that was almost a problem for me, but eventually didn't end up being one. And that's that it does have some peculiar choices for soundtrack for certain scenes in the film. I mean, it stretches from anywhere from like post rock to operatic choir. We've got some Sia Ross in there, we've also got Maggie Rogers. Pretty much as broad as you can get as a soundtrack, and certain scenes you just you do feel immediately like, oh, that, that wouldn't be my first choice 
for the song in that scene. And I'm not sure if that's just because, you know, we've kind of been conditioned to see a certain type of music over certain types of scenes here, or whether because it was genuinely the wrong choice of music for that scene. But as the film went on, I actually found the kind of odd choices of music to be so much more endearing. It does add to this kind of weird mishmash of stuff that this whole film feels a little bit like, like you're looking through this collage or family photo album. And that's what I love so much about this film. It does feel like you just sort of sat looking through a family's memories uh, through a photo album. And that's that's a really great way of looking at a story like this, I think. And clearly it meant I got absolutely sucked into it. I was a weeping mess. I heard a couple of people in the audience around me like, oh, I didn't really get me as much as I was expecting it to. Cause you watch the trailer for this and you're like, I'm a cry. It's gonna do, it's just gonna do that. That's just a given. And so I think, well, naturally some people aren't gonna get that emotional response. Not this guy. I cried like a motherfucking baby throughout this entire thing. There are just so many moments that are just so gorgeously done. Uh, that make up for any of the problems that I had towards the beginning of this film at all. Every hug in this film, I felt. I, I felt like in, in the core of my very being. Um, and I've not, I've not really had that. It's an oddly specific thing to pick up on a film. But the hugs in this film, man, they did something to me. Right from the first one, you see Timothy Chalamet go in and hug uh, Steve Carell. And it's just so much emotion and, 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 and passion from, from son to father in those hugs. It was, it was beautiful. It genuinely was. It makes me feel a bit teary-eyed talking about it. But genuinely, it, it, it got me. All that really matters in this film is that central relationship between father and son. It's what it's trying to show here. It's the characters that are on display here from the memoirs that are written by the real life versions of those characters. Uh, and the fact that it nailed that for me, this film already had it in the bag. It does veer into the cheese throughout certain points in this film to be expected. And hey, I'm constantly, constantly saying that, you know what? I love a bit of cheese in films, fight me. But if you're someone that doesn't like things that can be a bit overtly cheesy, you might take some issue with some of the stuff that happens in this film. But when it comes down to it, everything I wanted from Beautiful Boy and more, I, I was completely overwhelmed by it from an emotional standpoint. I kind of had to take a moment outside afterwards. You come out of the screening and you just look at everyone and they've all, they've all got the, you know, the red puffy eyes from crying getting their sniffles away and you're like, yeah, cool, that's all right, we, we don't need to say anything, we all know what just happened to us. I adored it, I just think it got better and better as the film unraveled. It's an incredibly urgent and important film as well, it's got a really great message and an incredible true story at the head of it as well. I mean, Nick and David Chef, man, hats off to them, incredibly strong people. But I absolutely do think you have to see it for yourself and make your own decision on it. I'm recommending it to everyone, Timothy Chalamet and Steve Carell, they can't both get best actor, I'm just realising. Oh, don't make me pick. But what about you guys? Have you seen Beautiful Boy yet? I know it just released on a limited run over in the US. I think it goes a little bit wider next week, but it's showing at the film festival. So if you've seen it at the festival over here in the UK, let me know what you thought about it in the comments below. And as usual, if you do like this video and you want to see me talk about more shit, please consider clicking subscribe. It really helps me out, but it also means that you won't be missing any more from the London Film Festival this year. If you haven't noticed, I've got a review going up every day. It's 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 great fun and it's taken its toll. <laughs> and also, if you haven't yet, make sure you are following the Sue Talks podcast on any of the formats you want to listen to it on. And follow us on Twitter. Links for that in the description below. Because we're going to be doing a couple of longer, in-depth reviews on films I've seen at the film festival. And Beautiful Boy. Well, guess what? It's going to really be one of those gosh darn films we're doing some more in-depth talk on. So yeah, look forward to that coming out at the end of this weekend, maybe beginning of next week. Not sure yet, but it's happening. But I'm off to count down the minutes until I can see Beautiful Boy again. Until next time, though, stay beautiful, mother truckers.